Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lehman's Shenanigans of 1977. And it's Tuesday night, and you know what that means. It's time for the NXT Event Center. And here's the man that will bring you all that has happened on NXT, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. This is episode 1175, NXT Event Center for January the 30th, 2024. The final NXT before this Sunday's Vengeance Day and also the fallout from the Royal Rumble because four NXT superstars have made their appearance in the Royal Rumble. One of them in the ring right now watching the matchup. Uh, it's Carmelo Hayes. Braun Breaker was another, replace, uh, uh, replacing Brock Lesnar in that Royal Rumble um, due to um, Lesnar's involvement in the Vince McMahon situation. Then, on the women's side, you got former NXT Women's Champions, Roxanne Perez and Tiffany Stratton. They made their appearance in the Royal, appearances in the Royal Rumble as well. So, What's going on? The Dusty Classic semifinals is on right now. The final half of that. As you know, Braun, speaking of Braun Breaker, him and Baron Corbin in the final round of that tournament. It is the LWOs, Joaquin Wild and Cruz Del Toro taking on the team of Carmella Hayes and whoop that trick Williams. That's right. And uh, they're going an excellent matchup. The LWO, Joaquin Wild is a is a high flyer. If they had the Cruiserweight division, Joaquin Wilde would win the tournament and become a Cruiserweight champion. But, I, th I think now, with Vince McMahon gone, I think they should bring that back, the, the uh, Cruiserweight uh, championship. And so I'll tell you one thing right now, it's going to be a, a, lot of, a lot of fun nowadays. And uh, I, just can't, I personally cannot wait to see what happens, though. Now, now that... Uh, now that Vince McMahon is no, officially no longer in power of any kind, and with The Rock now, and with The Rock now in charge, who knows? So uh, I, I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen here. So, we'll get right back to this matchup here. It's in picture in picture. They're still going. LWO is in control right now. We'll see what happens. So, uh, check you. Um, so, uh, we'll check you later. All right. Uh, the match is over, and uh, Hayes and Williams will be advancing to the Dusty Classic Finals as they face Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin this Sunday at Vengeance Day. Meanwhile, Oba Femi was attacking the LWO until Dragon Lee decides to assist him, and Oba Femi took all three of these guys out. As you know, Dragon Lee will be challenging Oba Femi for the North American title this Sunday at Vengeance Day as well. Rich Holland uh, was talking to the new general manager, Ava Rain, about taking all three members of Gallus, but Ava uh, refuses to even get that match going. Uh, but Lexus King comes in and, and decided to give her a gift basket of, of pictures of himself and his merch, congratulating her. But then Ava goes, you know what? I have an idea. Tonight, it will be Lexus King versus Ridge Holland. <laughs> and then Ava grabbed, gave Ridge Holland a gift basket, Merry Christmas. And then he goes, re-gift. See you out there. So it was great. Now we're going to have um, Lana Valkyrie kind of confront Tim Paxley and why she attacked Roxanne, put Roxanne Perez to a table. And looks like Tate, looks like Lyra, looks like Tatum Paxley is obsessed. Reminds me of Mickey James and Trish Stratus. That little situation. But now it will now right now it's Roxanne Perez versus Tatum Paxley with uh, Lyra Vicaria on commentary. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. The match is on right now. Roxanne Perez is getting control. So uh, I will see you. When the match is over and whatever else happens during the next commercial break. Well, that matchup between Perez and Paxley is over. Roxanne Perez won with Pop Rocks. And the two ladies decide to brawl after the matchup. But Lyra Valkyria broke, breaks it up and tell, Lyra tells Perez, Focus on me. Don't worry about her. I have nothing to do with her. I'm, I'm about this title and I'm about this matchup. So, and also, Ren Seclair tried to uh, pick the brain of... Uh, Ariana Grace, and Ariana Grace says all this crazy stuff, and then Fallon Henley says, hey, don't fill her head with that, all that delusions of grandeur. In fact, why don't you show her tonight in the ring? In fact, I'll find Ava. You know what that means? Another ladies' matchup. So the ladies are in full force tonight here in NXT. Next up, Electra Lopez, Lola Vice. Hmm. 
After all the things all Vice said about Electra Lopez. And I think Electra Lopez has got that newfound confidence ever since she realigned, realigned herself with Santos Escobar and the new Legado del Fantasma on SmackDown. We'll find out for sure what goes down. So, uh, we'll find out what goes down in that matchup between two lovely Latinas in Electra Lopez and Lola Vice coming up next. All right, the match between Lola Vice and Lecha Lopez, between those lovely ladies, is over. And Lola Vice has picked up the victory, to, um, keeping her momentum as the NXT breakout uh, Women's Breakout Tournament winner. And she has yet to cash in that contract of hers. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Joe Gacy confronts Dijak, which is in, in Dijak's office, which, well, he took a big risk on that. Dijak goes, you know, he started t- trash talking, and then all of a sudden, Die Jack and Gacy decided to beat the crap out of each other in that office and, and brawling in that in that office of Die Jacks. Now, right now, it's Rich Holland going one on one with Lexus King. That's right. If you don't know who Lexus King is, he is none other than Brian Pillman Jr., the son of the late great Brian Pillman. And and Rich Holland was once a member of the Brawling Brutes. Now he's off on his own. Let's see what happens during that matchup. It was like uh, Rich Holland needs to send a message to Gallus, loud and clear. And that loudmouth Alexis King, well, unfortunately, he's been the guinea pig for that situation. So we'll see what happens during that matchup. Um, it's on in picture in picture. We will see what happens when we come back. Well, the match is um, over. In fact, Gallus got involved during the matchup and. Uh, Cost Ridge Hall in the matchup as Lexus King hits the coronation. One, two, three. Lexus King wins the matchup and coming up next, it seems like Ch- Andre Chase, Duke Hudson, and Riley Osborne say goodbye, Chase U. But where is the uh, hell JC Jane in this situation? We'll find out when we come back from commercial break. Okay, see what um, what is happening now. Hayes and Williams were talking about uh, what happened this past weekend. You know, uh, Williams said, hey, it's, it's, Surprise to see you at the Rumble. Surprise to see you on SmackDown. They're talking about being one step closer to the Dusty Cup. And Trick Williams going to handle business with the Elliott Dragon off for the NXT title. Then uh, Chase U, uh, Duke Hudson, Riley, Riley Osborne, and Andre Chase were addressing the NXT universe. Duke Hudson did a, a little video tribute to Chase U. But... As they were saying their goodbyes, J.C. Jane and Thea Hale came out, and J.C. Jane says, I got a way to save Chase U. So she presented the ladies of the Chase U calendar of 2024, which this Sunday will be on sale. And that could mean... And that could mean that Chase U is going to be saved. And as a result, J.C. Jane is now part of Chase U. So you're talking about this. Now, Chase U is like a Power Ranger team. you got three guys and two girls. You know that? And Andre Chase is your Red Ranger. I believe Duke Hudson could be a Black Ranger. Your Blue Ranger could be Riley Osborn. Your Yellow Ranger could be J.C. Jane. Your Pink Ranger could be Thea Hale. But who could be a Sixth Ranger for, for Chase U? Who knows for sure if there ever was one. But, however, but then the family, um, what started all this, uh, the tag team champs uh, got a promo OTM. They have a six-person tag this coming Sunday as they face OTM and Jada Parker. And you know what? Call Rizzo. So Adriana Rizzo, cute and beautiful, but also a tough chick. Find out. You don't mess with the family. And Brooke Sension was talking to Henley as she was getting ready for a match against Ariana Grace. And he wanted to reminisce about how him, him Briggs, and Henley won the NXT tag t- and UK tag team titles and all that. And Briggs is going to go alone. Uh, uh, Jensen's going to have to go alone, man. So Brooks Jensen, Josh Briggs, Country Grit. We'll see what happens. As Fallon Henley goes one-on-one with Miss NXT herself, Ariana Grace, coming up next. Well, uh, Chase U decided to celebrate the whole uh, Chase U still alive thing. And... You know, Chase U's been thanking J.C. Jane. And then 
JC Jane uh, talk to one of the ladies and said, get the calendars ready and all that for Vengeance Day. And then Lexus King interrupts them saying, yeah, you know, it's great. And, the cl- and he's starting to um, flirt up with uh, JC Jane and Lexus, I mean, not Lexus, and Thea Hale. And so, and, and so Riley Osborne got in his face, why are you always standing in my way? Because I'm standing in between JC Jane and Thea Hale. That's what I was supposed to do. They're like sisters to me. And then they said, Lexus King said, nobody likes you. And then walks away and, you know, and Thea Hale goes, well, you, you, he's he's wrong. Everybody likes you. I like you. You do? I kind of like you. I think Thea Hale is trying to keep herself from saying that she she has a huge crush on Riley Osborne. So, so that. And then they got scared between the brawl between um, uh, Joe Gacy and Dijak. That's still going on. And I know it's behind one of the security members or the officials. Looks like Orny Lorkin's back on NXT for quite a while now. Are we going to see him in the ring again? I don't know. But anyways, he was one of the um, the uh, you know security officials that um, in NXT that was separating the two of them. And now we're at in picture in picture the lovely Fallon Henley with Ren Sinclair, formerly known as Matty Renkowski, who we end up in, we interviewed her a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, a couple uh, of year, uh, a couple of years ago, on rant and rave, and we all know how well that interview went. But anyways, uh, is facing Ariana Grace right now. Boy, tell you one thing: delusions of grandeur. Ariana Grace reminds me of one person that's like that. Oh, her dad, Santino Morella. All right. Well, we'll show you the results of that. I'll tell you the results of that matchup. I think uh, we're almost nearing the Williams Dragonoff face to face. Check you guys later on that one. Well, the Henley Grace matchup ended in a Grace victory because Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend from Metaphor got involved in the matchup. And meanwhile, OTM cut a promo on the family as they were determined to prove people wrong. At Vengeance Day this Sunday. Not only that, metaphor, uh, Norm Donald's about to defend his Heritage Cup championship, and Vic Joseph got word to get into the back, and Joe, Joe Gacy and Dijek continue the bra on top of a storage bin, and there's a dumpster about a few feet down, and Dijak ended up kicking Gacy inside that dumpster. Oh boy. And his officials are trying. The officials and everybody else trying to beg them to stop, 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 but they keep on going. So this is going to be an interesting situation to see what happens. To see if, I hope Joe Gacy's okay, though. But, uh, <laughs> i tell you what. If I were Jakara and Lash Legend, I'd grow eyes in the back of your head because Ren Sinclair and Fallon Henley are going to come after them. So, because I think the Heritage Cup Championship is up next. So, um, between Von Wagner and Noam Dar. So we'll see what happens in between in that matchup. All right, so uh, we will be right back once again. All right, Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker were talking about, and Baron Corbin says he was impressed with Breaker's performance at the Royal Rumble last uh, this past Saturday night. He was really excited about it. He was really hyped and says they would give him an opportunity, give the momentum going in to the Vengeance Day Dusty Cup Finals against the team of Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. And uh, then the Heritage Cup Championship was on. Noam Dar defending against um, Vaughn Wagner, as you, you know, the Heritage Cup rules. Six three-minute rounds, two out of three falls. DQ or knockout ends the matchup. When the fall occurs, the round ends. And whoever wins the two out of three falls wins the matchup in the Heritage Cup. And if... Uh, Whoever has the most falls at the end of all six rounds will win. But if it's a tie, champion retains. So, in, so technically, it will be a time. It will be a draw in that matchup. So right now, Von Wagner, not understanding the rules of the matchup, got pen, um, um, round one. Nobody won. Round two, Darg hit the Nova Roller on Wagner. But now round three, and it seems like no, uh, Noam Darg's got a strategy going in, taking the big man off his feet. And Mr. Stone and his sons, Cash and Carter, are watching from the crowd. I'm hoping that um, Kat, uh, I'm hoping that the training has paid off, and hopefully the, his boys get a raise if uh, 
if uh, Von Wagner wins the Heritage Cup title. See what happens. If I were Fallon Henley and, Re and Ren Sinclair, I would come out and make sure that Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend don't get involved in this thing as vengeance. So we shall see what happens afterwards. So we'll be right back at the conclusion of this matchup. Well, the Heritage Cup Championship ended in four rounds. Dar went two straight on Von Wagner, but <laughs> Wagner was not done. He wanted to put Noam Dar through a table. No, he put Oro Mensa through a table. And Mr. Stone, <laughs> Wagner, and uh, Mr. Stone's sons, Cash and Cotter, were celebrating that. In fact, after Noam Dar and Oro Mensa were, were uh, taunting the, the son, Mr. Stone's sons, and, and Mr. Stone's sons did a, mm, and all that, they didn't cry. They were like, yeah! Yeah, you suck and all that. It was, it was hilarious. But then Ava Rain got ticked off at Dijek. What are you thinking? What are you doing? I should suspend you. You probably didn't even know Ultimate Choice. And he goes, and Dijek goes, don't give me, give me Gacy this Sunday at Vengeance Day. He goes, no, you're nuts. I don't know what kind of condition he's in, right? All of a sudden, here comes, and then and, and here comes uh, Joe Gacy rising up on the dumpster. He says, that sounds fun. He accepts the challenge. So, Vengeance Day, it's going to happen. Joe Gacy versus Dijak, no disqualification. Are we crazy? Is Joe Gacy nuts? Joe Gacy's got to be out of his frigging mind. This is going to be interesting. Up next, Trick Williams and Ilya Dragunov confront face-to-face -face before the NXT title. We will see. That's just Sunday. We will see what comes out of that. So, in conclusion, the, the confrontation between um, Williams and Dragunov, uh, Ilya Dragunov thinks that Trick Williams is not focused on the title matchup. He thinks that Carmelo Hayes is playing him, and um, Trick doesn't th think so and all that. And then afterwards, when they settled things, they shook hands, they hugged, but then they were attacked by Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Carmelo Hayes gets involved. And at the end, Trick Williams was face-to-face -face once again with Dragunov. And they were doing a little trash talking while Hayes was looking on in the background. Hmm. So that's where it ends right now. What I'm going to do is possibly tomorrow I'm going to make my picks and predictions for the... Um, well, NXT's Vengeance Day tomorrow in a separate video, and what I'm going to do because I don't want to do it right. I don't want to do it. I want to make sure I get some sleep and all that. And uh, we will um, <clears throat> that way tomorrow. I'll have plenty of time to do that. So thank you for tuning in for episode 1175 of Eric Lee, Eric Lee Shenanigans of 1977. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful night. Have a blessed night. And until the next episode... Oh, by the way, if you like, anybody likes this video, um, give it a like. Um, give the video a like. If you like any of my contents, please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. That way you can find out where the next video will be uploaded. So, until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home, please. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, door for Bob Saget Productions, and in association with a Raven Ball for Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.